From a brilliant boy to a gaunt, chain-smoking shadow drowning in alcohol and remorse, J. Robert Oppenheimer lived his final years with full knowledge of what he'd become, the arbiter of unimaginable destruction. Oppenheimer died in 1967, more than two decades after two atomic bombs were dropped on Japan. Known as the father of the atomic bomb, the bombing of Japan concluding World War II in the Pacific Theater proved a sad turning point to the theoretical physicist's career. Oppenheimer was born in 1904 in New York City to wealthy parents. He was an intelligent and lonely child interested in science, especially mineralogy and literature, the reading and writing of poetry in particular. He was educated in progressive politics and secular humanism, and as a boy, he seemed to live a life of relative privilege. According to the National Park Service, Oppenheimer later said, My life as a child did not prepare me for the fact that the world is full of cruel and bitter things. While traveling in Europe, Oppenheimer contracted dysentery, and while recuperating, he visited New Mexico for the first time, where the future Manhattan Project would be located. Oppenheimer graduated from Harvard summa cum laude and researched and studied theoretical physics at elite European and U.S. universities. By the late 1920s, Oppenheimer was employed at both the California Institute of Technology and the University of California, Berkeley, where he met his future wife, Katherine Harrison. They married in 1940. Early on in the war, Oppenheimer was already at work researching a potential nuclear power, and by 1942, he was appointed director of the Manhattan Project in Los Alamos, New Mexico, tasked with the A-bomb's development. For Oppenheimer, at least at first, the development of an atomic bomb was inevitable. As a scientist, his job was to develop the technology. It was up to the politicians to control it. Once Oppenheimer witnessed the so-called Trinity Test A-bomb explosion, and especially after the second of two atomic bombs were dropped on Japan, his views on nuclear technology and atomic weaponry shifted. At the Trinity Test explosion, the scientist famously quoted the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. In 1945, Oppenheimer told President Harry Truman he felt like he had blood on his hands for the destruction wrought on Japan by the A-bomb, marking the beginning of the end of the scientist's favorite place in Washington. Oppenheimer expressed regret over what he helped create, and with alleged ties to communism, he was rejected by the political establishment. Speaking to the American Philosophical Society in the post-war period, Oppenheimer said, We have made a thing, a most terrible weapon, that has altered abruptly and profoundly the nature of the world, a thing that by all the standards of the world we grew up in is an evil thing. If there is another world war, this civilization may go under. The cumulative stresses of his purported personal guilt and public humiliation likely did nothing to curb his habits and undoubtedly helped pave the way for his early demise. By 1944 and 1945, J. Robert Oppenheimer was already described as a heavy chain smoker who could burn through 100 cigarettes in a day, as well as consume excessive amounts of alcohol. His overall health was reportedly abysmal, and he had a dangerously low BMI. A lifelong smoker and heavy drinker in poor health at the end of his life, Oppenheimer was diagnosed with throat cancer in 1965. Still, once he was diagnosed with cancer, Oppenheimer apparently found some peace, according to Freeman Dyson, who also worked at the Manhattan Project. According to the New Atlantis, Dyson said that as Oppenheimer approached death, his whole demeanor changed. Dyson said, He accepted his fate gracefully. He carried on with his job. He never complained. He became quite suddenly simple and no longer trying to impress anybody. Oppenheimer was director of the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton University from 1947 until he retired in 1966. He passed away on February 18, 1967 at the age of 62.